Hello people and welcome aboard to follow yet another World Team Cargasson Online Championships friendly match and today's stream will feature the final friendly the final friendly match that will take place this season as Finland and Spain collide. Now Starting from next week, we are going into the actual business and uh, the actual tournament matches are set to begin. Not necessarily on Monday, but Monday is the first day on which players or teams will be able to schedule their tournament matches too. Today's lineup though. First up we have Ilka versus Loku Ilo, then Lapinkoski versus Madcan, Deivainen versus 2020 Rafa, Hosumias versus Taxi One, and Kajanin Olli versus My Crack. Now, for those of you who do not know the uh, real uh, names, uh, Ilka is uh, Ilka Ialainen, Lapinkoski Mikko Sormunen, Teivainen is Teivo Teivainen, Housumies Vinski Kivilompola, and Kajanin Olli Olli Saarinen. In the lineups, we do have. Um, uh, speaking of Dave Einen, we, uh, who is the 2013 and 2016 nas national champion of Finland, Kajanin only national champion from uh, 2015, Lapinkoski has, uh, before myself, has held the title of the highest ranked Finnish player, although mostly with expansions, but along with this uh, tournament he has done uh, some uh, great effort uh, with, with no sweat, tears or blood uh, spared when it comes to the uh, base version as well. And I have been able, able to confirm that he is actually making great, great progress. Hosomies also more experienced with expansions, but also does have the will to learn and to improve in base Carcasson as well, which I am very happy about, as, uh, as that means that I am able to do some uh, private teaching and that has so far been uh, quite entertaining for me. <sighs> Hello Risto. I have a wild guess who you are. <laughs> uh, also hello Lef. I do hope you enjoy today's stream, as it will be indeed, indeed the last of its kind when it comes to just uh, casual friendly matches with no stakes, also uh, almost whatsoever. And uh, as like I said, starting from uh, tomorrow and onwards, the stakes are high on every week. If you do want to see some particular match, do let me know in the chat. We will jump um, into that when we can. For now, we could uh, start, for example, uh, with uh, Kajanin Olli and Mike Rack. If they would have started. Uh, instead, they have not. So let's see if all the others are, or if uh, if anyone else has. So give me a second.
Yes, and as a reminder, Finland does act as a home team, so the uh, tables 1, 3 and 5 from Finland are responsible for creating the table, and tables 2 and 4, meaning Madcan and Texi, are responsible for creating the tables from Spain's side. The game settings will be, of course, the uh, uh, the uh, normal games with slow speed format with increments. And seems that I might have messed up um, not actually um, clarifying to my team that we are the home team, so we shall have some uh, waiting to do. Instead, let's go to see how Taxi is managing against Hosumis. And actually, I especially um, would also like to. Uh, feature a match from Hosumis today, as I would like to see how much of a progress he has done with the private sessions. Arista saying, I played Carcassonne only a couple of times, and also I'm kind of new to other board games. I'm excited to see high-level Carcassonne first time. That is what this channel is for for competitive Carcassonne, or not not like entirely competitive, but uh, uh, a lot of a lot of the, a lot of the channel is uh, definitely uh, surrounded by by uh, competitive Carcassonne and also just like um, the the more like uh, higher level Carcassonne in general, not just the uh, the casual games. It in, in, it's gonna involve a lot of a lot of um, advanced techniques, which I hope that I am able to uh, plant into everyone's heads, really, who watch the channel and who watch the analysis videos. And, of course, uh, who, who watch the streams, as we are going to be doing live analysis here as well. But now, to the game between uh, Hosumis and Texi. I guess the Texi has a three-point lead. Both players with, uh, with with cities. Texi with two cities. A rather um, lucrative, uh, yeah, a, a rather a, a bit more lucrative city for uh, for Texi and. Uh, Truly, sort of a very, very unfortunate monastery placement for <laughs> for Hosumis, and it does look like he will not be afraid one bit to to start scoring the monasteries. I mean, the first one I can still understand because, like, this was the only spot that he can place a monastery to, and uh, because, like myself, have instructed him to actually like very aggressively meeple. Uh, monasteries at the start of the game. Well, I can't really like. Uh, um, I I can't really judge him too much. Of uh, I do think this is a a small mistake. Even though uh, just because like even though you want to aggressively meeple monasteries, you still have to take into account that uh, when you when you meeple this monastery, your opponent will immediately have a turn or a possibility to block two of your meeples by placing either a triple city or a triangle over here, and thus making it completely impossible for this castle to ever be completed. And now, oh my god, oh my god, Hosumis, Hosumis, please do it, do it for the... Yes, he does it, meeple the monastery, yes, 
Yes, yes, yes, yes, yes, yes. Okay, now it, it, a massive risk that has occurred here has paid off for now at least, where Hosomes has been able to get a a beautiful, 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 beautiful monastery cluster of three monasteries. Uh, they can still be blocked, but there are, uh, say, ten tiles. Yeah, 10 tiles still left that go over here. So chances are that if Texi does not do anything to this square or to this square uh, like quickly enough, then Hosomes, Hosomes, please, you gotta, you gotta save this. You gotta save this immediately. Save this, save this, save this, please. I hope I have taught him well. N needs to save this. This is the only move Hosomes needs to do. And he'll be... Ah yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. I mean, it's 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 not a, it's not a, like a difficult move to find, but I am so pleased that uh, Hosmus is is actually doing really well. Like despite um, the the massive risks that uh, Hosmus has taken on the first uh, like twenty to 50, or like fifteen to twenty tiles with these monasteries, it paid off. Which I think. When you're going up against a a strong 600 rated Spanish player, and uh, you're basically like uh, out skilled, I would say even like um, like pretty far, and uh, of course also um, out eload, <laughs> which is uh, well kind of a, a kind of an indicator of uh, of being um, like out skilled sort of, then you gotta take risks. And this is a primary example, which I'm not, I'm not going to say that it's going to work like in the long run, because there were quite a many tiles which uh, Texi had possibility to trap three meeples too. But now it has paid off and this is just, just beautiful to look at. Also, a um, very nice concentrating move by Hosomies here getting another monastery but not meebling it this time because he would be investing his final meeple, his final meeple and he needs that to score quick points kind of like here if he had no meeple in hand he would have lost four points so i i'm loving this i'm loving this just adding two points and keeping it keeping the meeple in hand just in case that he gets uh, stuff to score quick points with and since he didn't not he didn't have uh, like almost any other possibility of getting meeples out except for getting a a triangle or a divider over here then he needs to be very patient and patient he was which is fantastic but now there is a massive massive field already worth six six cities so uh, also 18 points and uh, it's gonna be worth fighting for for sure. Now Hosomis is is having a meeple advantage, but he does not get a tile with which he could attack to the field with uh, in a very like decent manner. Now these gotta be very careful with starting cities like this because you gotta you gotta immediately see that how can you be blocked, and in this case the most obvious block is. Your opponent goes over here with a road tile and limits this square to a dagger, which there are one, two, three on the board, and there are three of those uh, particular daggers in the game as a whole. So this is a very high risk move, which uh, I think is a is is still a, a very obvious mistake to a more experienced player, but. Um, it does seem like Hosmo is, is able to get uh, sort of kinda like out of trouble with this one. He did not get blocked. He did not get uh, um, restricted into. Uh, he didn't. He didn't get blocked, and thus is not at the moment in a losing mini battle. Or well, he, or like well, he sort of is because it's it's uh, three points versus four points, and they and the both of the features share the same square. But 
Hosomius does have tiles to go here and does even have the second divider to go, to go there too, which he would very much like. Like if he gets the second divider, he can go over here, score six points. And uh, uh, yeah, score six points for the field and uh, also get the meeple back from the city and just score an eight point field. Now, Hosomius going, wait, 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 wait. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, that's very unfortunate. Like, there's no way he has not, like, misclicked this meeple to the field. Oh, no. Like, there is absolutely no way, like, uh, Hosom is, like, makes this mistake, like, on purpose. I mean, this must have been a misclick, which... Well, yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm like almost a hundred percent certain that this is, that this, ha, this has been a misclick, and it's, in, it has been a very, very unfortunate one of that kind, because uh, Hosmis now does have two meeples on the field, but this meeple is not on the main field; it's on a zero point field, which might come back uh, to bite him in the future. And uh, like, just, that's just a very unfortunate meeple here. Just stranded for zero points. But Texi does not have two meeples on the field uh, either. As a matter of fact, he doesn't have a single meeple on the field at, um, at the moment. So he still needs to uh, connect this meeple. But I can almost with 100% certainty assure that uh, Texi will do that at some point. Because it is an 18-point field, and with just one road tile, he will be able to make a 15-point move, which he will def uh, which seems that which seems like he is gonna need it, because Hosmes is now at plus 22 points, um, having a, a, having a, tw a plus 22 point advantage, plus the field. Let's let's count the field as equal, um, but uh, then plus 28, 29, 30, 35, 37. Uh, 28, 34, 28, 25, 21, 19, 16. It seems like Hosomis is actually plus 16 points at the moment, and he does have a meeple which he, which he can get which which he can get back, as well as this meeple uh, from the road, which if he gets a um, a field crossroad. He will be able to get this meeple back, or just generally stack up a few more points on this road, and maybe finish the road like later on. But it just goes to say that uh, he does not he he does not have the situation where he would be like up in points, but he doesn't but he wouldn't have a possibility to get a meeple back, so, and like. That sort of situation would be a bit too early at this uh, stage, with 20 tiles still r remaining and having placed his final maple on the um, on the board at that point. But like I said, he was able to to do this because he had meeples in places where he can get them out from, and just this is just going like fantastically, uh, fantastically, like for for wholesome is here. Being able to neutralize the threat of Texi finishing an eight-point city and dropping a farmer on the field, instead, Hosomius is able to get a meeple of his own into the city, complete it, and get an, an additional three points to the to the field, and get a me and also get a meeple back in use. Hosomius is now going to be able to finally finish his road. It's a rather long road, but the question is, does he? Meeple the city cap. Uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. Only one city cap remaining. I, I, no, I don't think we. I don't. I don't think we meeple this. Uh, this is going to be a mistake. But I will excuse that for Hosomius, as um, as uh, even though he uh, he has not grasped the uh, idea of uh, knowledge of, of being aware of all rem of all of the uh, re of of all remaining tiles then uh, he he has made a significant improvement in just like a very short period of time only like like two or three weeks 
of being able to like do prioritization, do aggressive scoring where he needs to, and to um, uh, to be aware enough of the remaining tiles that uh, he's going to be able to make moves like uh, well, well these uh, rather easy ones, but still uh, he's going to be able to move to make moves which. Uh, continuously give him value for his styles, even if he did not meeple any features. <laughs> Commentators are usually unbiased and commented equally. Also, meanwhile, ah, uh, well, you... <laughs> yeah, I mean this match is a is a very big ex exception because I'm I'm very thrilled to actually be able to to stream matches of Finland, but also be, also just because I am uh, like just very excited like in general when uh, when I can see that uh, that uh, the teammates that I uh, have. Uh, put effort into and I uh, I am constantly put, putting effort into towards improving each of them that I can actually see that they are indeed improving and I mean it would be a lie if I said that I would not enjoy it <laughs> Ah, okay. Now, final tiles are gone. Now is Hosum is enough ahead that he will actually pull this off. Uh, he might actually be plus seven. He has he does does have a nine point field, and he has actually been able to win this game, which is just. Fantastic. Now, although given that uh, he took a huge gamble over here, uh, I think he played like uh, uh, quite quite solid, like um, all together. Now there is and there is still some work to do with uh, being aware of the remaining tiles and uh, of the types, like for example here turning the city uh, to the right, there weren't too many uh, city caps with with field um, as as opposed to city caps with the road, but um, I assume the idea was that uh, if he turns the, city, turns the city to the left, then uh, then of course it it will not be able to, uh, it, uh, taxi will not be able to go over here with a triangle, triple city or quad city and block both cities, thus neutralizing the, th the threat of an eight point city being completed, which I sort of have to actually agree. Perhaps going to the right was even a better, but there might have been even a, a, a better alternative, like in general, just not doing anything to this city before you can complete it. Like if you just complete a four-point city, then you automatically get a, a a opportunity to block this city. Not that it was like necessarily important to block it, but still. But 104 Finland in uh, Taxi Hosumis. And let's see uh, how the chat is doing, if we have uh, game recommendations. Don't make big features. If your host is now, don't make big features on the board when you don't have a meeple left. Indeed, yeah, that is also a very important note by Crafty Graph here. When Hosumius was left without any uh, meeples, certainly he should be very careful with his tiles not to leave any sort of uh, large features on the board.
Our meeple was intended saying like I can win from you with one meeple. Yeah, I, I, I see, I see. Just like you know, just the mental, uh, the, the mental destruction with, uh, with the just trunk farmers for zero points. Like at the at the mid game, it's like I have I have just all of the points in the world and I don't need this meeple. Just, um, Let's see. So because we do not have recommendations in the chat, we will see. Oh wow! Okay, there has been a very tight game between Kayan and Oli and Mike Frag for uh, one point um, win for Mike Frag indeed. So it's gonna be most likely some uh, juicy content. So let's have a look how they are going into the sec uh, how they are doing in the second game. Mike Rack with two meeple advantage and plus two on the scoreboard. We have a a ruin because all three triple cities with a road are gone, so this square cannot be filled. Thus, uh, and it will be tying two meeples from Mike Rack as opposed to one meeple from Kayan and Olli, but at least actually three meeples from Mike Rack as of for now, as he does have a road here as well, waiting for a starting tile to come, which there are still two remaining, so he has a 75% chance to still um, maybe even complete this road. But to compensate this ruin, all it does have monasteries, two of them. Um, as opposed to one of my cracks, a bit more developed, but two monasteries nonetheless. Only using his final meeple to attack the ruin, which is worth 10 points, so I wouldn't say it's not worth it, especially because he is actually forced to place at least one point minimum to this ruin, like nonetheless just to be able to get this uh, monastery meeple back. However, Oli is now without meeples and needs a city cap quite soon to be able to get a meeple back. Mike Rag might be considering something like going over here, just attacking this city with a second meeple as he does. Oli does get a meeple back, but uh, he might be losing this ruin, although there is a, um, a one positive side that um, in order to complete this city, Mike Rack will need a starting tile also here. And since he will now be needing a starting tile in two places, he, he will be forced to make a decision to either get just uh, six points or actually seven points, six for the road and one for the city or just uh, to complete this, this city. But it's going to depend on when the starting tiles actually come into Mycrack's hand, if at all. Because if, if Mycrack gets the starting tiles uh, before the triple cities, he will most certainly place them over here and just be left waiting for the triple city. Mm, I'm not a big fan of this move by, by Olli here. Just leaving a empty four point road and now Mike Rack is going to be able to also uh, indirectly protect this monastery, which now has a perfect monastery square built in it. Although there is only one monastery remaining and that is a road monastery, but still there is another positive side also, which is that uh, Mikrak is now going to be able to continue his road for completely for free and gets the, gets the final remaining monastery as well. Also has a massive, massive threat of, of finishing this uh, huge, huge city. Mikrak also gets the second starting tile. This is, this is very, this is looking incredibly bad for, for Olli. Because even though he is at the moment 
11 points ahead on the scoreboard, just the threats that, that MyCrack has going with a with a crossword over here and scoring five, six, seven points plus getting two meeples back into his hand and and he gets the triple city and this is just just absolutely massive for for Mike especially at at this late late stage of the game and miraculously it seems like uh, Oli has still not been able to to connect to this 10 point ruin and if he does not uh, get the right tiles he's definitely going to be losing this game now, Mikrak in a 15 point lead with a long, long row 20, 25, 33, 30, uh, 29. Just another triple city for Mikrak. Only finally being able to join the 10 point ruin and getting 10 points for himself. But it might be too late, or I think it, it is indefinitely too late as uh, Mikrak is just being able is just able to to um, stack up points after points after points now invades this in, invades the field and possibly able to invade the field from here as well if there are tiles to do so I'm not sure if there are but only does get a second people to the field now kind of has to has to just hope that Mikrak doesn't get a tile but he does get the tile to take the field into an equal position and uh, it seems like Mikrak just has a a huge amount of points just racked up just waiting to get uh, claimed and uh, it does indeed seem that uh, Mikrak is able to take a 2-0 victory and the first match point for for team Spain Whew. So very, uh, maybe a bit unfortunate for Gajani only that he was not able to get the starting tiles, but just some uh, beautiful play from Mikrak as well. Noticing that uh, when Gajani only was without meeples, then that was the, that was the time to strike for Mikrak with his meeple advantage. Just going over here with a 75% chance of getting the triple city and also with two starting tiles remaining and just making, just creating these absolutely massive threats one after another, which uh, only just wasn't able to, um, to negate at all. On a later on, on a later stage. So 2-0 for Spain and Spain goes into a 1-0 lead. What can you do when opponent draws three perfect tiles? And even one of those tiles for Oli is a huge point swing. Yeah, indeed it is, but uh, that is how odds work. You gotta go, um, you, you, you gotta make the threats when there are still tiles that fit you and when there are, you know, like multiple suitable tiles for you, then uh, of course, the, the more there are, the better the odds are going, uh, into your favor. Actually, let's do. Huh. Uh, interesting. Uh, pa -pa 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 -pa. Let's 
seems like one of our Finnish players is not even online. Huh. I will have to settle that out uh, later on, but it lo looks like it's going to be a uh, kind of a, a free match point for uh, for Spain for that one. I assume Loku is. Uh, is uh, playing today. Also wonderful stuff. Lapinkoski also been able to win his first game and is now in a 1-0 lead. Let's actually quickly quickly check uh, if Loku Ilo is uh, online. He is so it's gonna be just a uh, a give up a win on that duel for Loku, which is very unfortunate. Um, yeah, well, I, I do have to apologize for Team Spain that uh, Loku does not seem does not seem able uh, does not seem to be able to play today uh, due to an absence from uh, uh, from from Finland. But uh, it is what it is. Now we then roll with uh, only four versus four. Let's focus on uh, how Lapinkoski does. Interesting. Decides to also take the one point city, which yeah, it's it's actually fine because it's the start of the game and uh, there are still so many towns that fit into this square. Just like eight city caps and. Uh, uh, four triangles plus three triple cities, so just a a bunch of tiles that uh, will fit quite nicely. Lapinkoski, absolutely, this is the spot. Take a five point, take a five point monastery and create an an attacking spot to the large city of Matkan. And now Matkan is gonna be forced to use a tile to his city, which he, I would imagine, did not actually want to use. He, I think he would have rather just finished this city and... What? Wow. Interesting, uh, interesting placement by the Spanish player here. Not actually taking away the attacking spot, but instead creating the threat of... Uh, of uh, connecting to the city with another meeple and uh, also finishing the city from the right side, but this might backfire like really bad, well, like like really terribly for the Spanish player. I think he should have just played like way more uh, optimistically, or, or like not optimistically, but uh, way way more uh, um, carefully. Uh, and just uh, take away the attacking spot by either going here and starting a city at the top or just simply going over here and starting a city on the right. Because things can get a bit awkward for Madcan over here. And I am definitely hoping that they will. <laughs> because I would like to see Lapinkoski win. <clears throat> Not that I'm biased. But I would also like to see Lapinkoski, when he gets the right chance to go over here and start harassing this one point city, just to be able to make it a bit more difficult for Madcan to actually make this move of getting the second meeple into this city. And Lapinkoski might not actually be so inclined to place a triple city or a triangle even here before this situation has been somehow taken care of. Does he meeple the road? No he doesn't, which I think I gotta say is a mistake because now Matt can just able to take a four point road and gonna be able to limit the, the city of, of Mikko. 
Does get a perfect tile though. Does get the most perfect tile for his needs. I think now he could um, also meeple the road because it will make a an easy five point road with not too much effort. And see, like here, had he meepled the road, then uh, uh, then he would be able to make a three point. A quick road, but ins instead now he's just taking a quick three points from the three point road and possibly losing a bit of value from a crossroad because he's not going to be able to take advantage of a of a curve, for example, here right now would make a three point road and then start a new city. Instead, now he just he just has to probably just settle for a for a four point city which is at least what I would do. Goes for the four point city. It's sort of like kind of miraculous that Mad Kang still has not been able to get a singular triple city or a, a or, or a triangle over here. Now, now very important for Madcan likely is to go over here and save this connection spot, which only he can really then use. I think this would this would be the, the most powerful move, easily the, the most powerful move at the at the moment which he can make. And he makes it. Oh but Lapikus gets, gets the absolute dream tile! The absolute No! 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 Oh, oh, it hurts. It hurts so bad. Lapinkoski had the, the audacity to finish the shared city instead of going over here and dropping a meeple of his own with five, f all five field triangles still remaining. It would have been probably the game winning move. I cannot believe it. A massive, massive blunder by Lapinkoski. Just an absolute blunder. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> Maybe he wants a victory based on skill, not on, not on, on some lucky tiles. <sighs> I don't think that is the case. I I don't think that is the case, man. Like you, when you when you are playing for like competitive Carcassonne, like even though it is a friendly match, like there is absolutely no way you can make mistakes like this. Like these are gonna cost Finland games. These are gonna cost Finland matches. These are gonna cost Finland everything in the future if these keep happening. An absolute fumble and taking the tumble out of the cliff is what Lapinkoski is doing here, and he will most certainly hear about this move from me later on. As uh, just this is this is not what you do under any circumstances when there are five tiles remaining that fit here and win you the game. Just. 50, 25, 12 and a half, 6.25, 3.125, percent <sighs> chance to get one of the remaining five, just, just one of the remaining five field triangles and to go over here and win the game. 96.8% and uh, Labinkoski tosses it out the window. Like, you don't get chances like this, like, almost, like, never, especially in, in competitive Kalkaston. Like, imagine this is the, uh, imagine this was like, like the actual tournament game. Oh my god. Oh. 
Matt can kind of sort of controlling the field. No, ah, Lapinski, ha Lapinski, Lapinski does have a second meeple also on the field, which is a very, very minor relief. And I think Lapinski is actually ahead in points at the moment, like despite this horribleness. Um, plus one, minus three, equal, equal. Uh, let's assume the field is equal. Uh, so minus three equal minus three one two three four five six seven plus eight uh, but Matt can does have a bit of a larger threat over here making a five point move and dropping the farmer Uh, it is the same. So I th so I take it that the first thing you do when you start playing Carcassonne competitive uh, competitively is to learn the tile amounts by heart. I wonder how taxing it is to keep track of them during the during a game. Um, actually, this is one of the uh, uh, the main things that I would uh, guide uh, like new players also. Uh, or new or experienced, like no matter what your level is, um, if you are going into competitive Carcassonne, the first thing that you have to be aware of is the tiles that are in the game. Uh, not at all times, but um, you gotta know what type of tiles uh, does there exist uh, when the game begins and how many are there. You don't actually have to keep it uh, like track of uh, like track of every single tile during uh, during like every single given moment of the game. Um, you just have to keep track of the important ones that you need, and then uh, on on like the um, on on the, on the end game situations, you gotta be aware of the like all of the remaining tiles on the on the like on like the highest level, but. Uh, for starters, um, what, what I like to do, and what I actually did to learn all the tiles, is that um, I played like you know a couple of hundred games, and uh, um, after one game here and one and one game there, I took a moment of my time and just counted one type of tile that uh, existed on on the map when all. Uh, when all tiles were played, so I was like, okay, so how many like regular curves there are? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Okay, and then like that's it. Then you move to the next game, and you don't really have to do any um, any like uh, madness with the uh, with, with the tile count learning. You can do it like just one at a time like like one type of tile at a time over like several hundred games and believe uh, like believe it or not like several hundred games is actually not that much on pga like when you only use maybe 15 to like 15 to 20 minutes uh, in one game it's actually very very quick and you're gonna rack up all those games quite fast On the positive side, this is the content. Well, this is absolutely content. I give, I'll give you that. And uh, this is, this is what uh, Alexei would also call just entertaining moves. Thoroughly entertained every single viewer with this move. No doubts on that. Okay, uh, Lapinguski has dropped a third farmer on a rather interesting spot. Why would you have not dropped a third farmer like going from this side as opposed to from here? Because from here it is a lot more, a lot difficult. Uh, yeah, like way, way more difficult to actually connect to the field because you need a curve 
or a road monastery, but you can just go from here and you just need a curve or a like like any type of curve, not just a regular curve, but not, not, not just a regular curve, but any type of curve and you can connect to the field. So definitely a, a big misplay on on the on, on behalf of, of Mikko here going on the left side and trying to uh, um, I think like more rest oh I, I think the, I, I think the idea behind this like must have been something like uh, oh I'm gonna restrict this city to a to a uh, city plus road tile as opposed to a city plus field field. But the thing is that this type of uh, blocking doesn't really work, especially in this scenario when you when your first idea and and the primary idea is to drop a farmer. So this kind of uh, like a half block move is not a good idea. You want to you you want to have the easiest possible field connection opportunities at your disposal when you are fighting for the field. Not the ones which are already restricted from two sides. Like this, these are the type of spots when uh, w w that you go for when you are like, not like, uh, not, not like on, on a brink of desperation, but um, when you know that there are like multiple uh, like multiple tiles maybe like four or five curves remaining and then the the amount of tiles like is low enough that uh, your opponent might just ignore this connection because it, it just might not be worth for your opponent to start blocking when you have when you already have such a great chance of drawing one of those curves that you need like very very soon and it does seem like uh, Madcan has uh, that Madcan has taken uh, a bit of a lead here and does seem to also threaten the the completion of the city it might also drop a farmer if there are suitable tiles for both sides Ooh, story is out. He does go for a farmer. Lavinkoski likely gonna take a four point city because he can't block this. He can create a, he can create a blocking platform, but he can't block this. But now he does create an attacking opportunity to the field for himself. Mad can successfully gets to the field. Labinkoski draws another vanilla, which would have been perfect for Madcan, and I think which Madcan was definitely going for. Are there any more vanillas remaining? No, this is the final one. Okay, so Madcan will not be able to complete this city. But is going to the field going to be enough for Labinkoski? Minus 4, minus 7, minus 10, minus 13. Minus 16, minus 8, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, minus 4. Wait, but if he's minus 4, then the field is not going to be enough, right? But he still has to go for it, I think. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, there's not going to be a win here for Lapinkoski, no matter what he does. Wait, or did, did I count this monastery? Did, did Lapinkoski just lose? Like, because if there is a tile and if the field is enough for him to win, he might have just fumbled. But I'm not sure of the remaining tiles because I haven't had the time to count due to the commentary. Madcan, this looks like it is going to be vital. Uh, Lapikoski can go to the field, but 
he needs to re be remade. Okay, he does go to the field, and Mad Kang is not able to join with the Ford Meeple, which this was definitely a mistake on Mad Kang's part, because he would have been able to score at least uh, one more point on his final move, actually two more points. But is the field enough? Plus oh, I think Mad Kang wins by one point. Oh no. Oh, oh. One point win for Mad Kang, so it does not matter that he drops a farmer with uh, making a small mistake here. But it's just just everything that led to this point, like all the mistakes, all, all the, the bigger mistakes that Lapinguski did. First of all, of course, still this maneuver, just an, an, an atrocious move by Lapinguski, really, like just an atrocious. He missed all of the potential of the divider tile. All of the potential of it. And uh, then again, uh, over here, did not take a, a the more easy connection opportunity, but so wanted to restrict the uh, the city of Madcan to a city uh, plus road tile, which didn't work out so well because Lapinkowski ended up with just a three point meeple. Ah, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to push. La um, Lapinkoski and of course all the other Finnish players to watch the stream later on and to see uh, just how dangerous mistakes and uh, yeah and yeah and just how dangerous and vital mistakes they have done. Top twenty. Probably knows the exact remaining tiles during every stage of the game. The top, the top 500 knows the tiles that are behind after counting, but not everyone counts that accurately. Mm, I would actually, I would actually um, not even agree with uh, with Crafty here, um, like like entirely. I don't think the top 20 players are aware of of all of the uh, tiles, like like at any given moment, like. I highly doubt that uh, most of the players like see that like see that kind of trouble, um, like knowing every single time, uh, every single tile at every single stage of the game. Um, ex uh, like, with the exception that if you are like like uh, especially advanced in tile tracking instead of tile counting, then. Uh, then sure, I think you might have a chance to know all the tiles, but uh, still, I highly doubt that uh, tile tracking is uh, like would be that used because if you are actually keep, uh, actually keeping track of like oh, like 30, 40, 50 tiles, it's just too much effort to really put into you know to you know to to your brain <laughs> on. Um, like do, just during a game. Blitz saying maybe Lapinkowski could have uh, tried to join uh, the upper middle with his last two tiles instead of the left one, and he would have had plus three for the small field on the left. Um, upper middle with his last two tiles being the. Uh, um, the la, 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 uh, the regular curve and then something else and would have had plus three for the small field on the left. Ah, yeah, because because he made the three the, the three point field to the left. Yeah. It would have been actually, actually, 
Yeah, I mean, that would have been like plus one point to his road more, but uh, then I don't think that Madcan would have gone for the field. Because now he like went for the field because he was able to block one uh, connection platform, but actually there there might be some uh, yeah you might you might be onto something because it is at least one more point to the to the road, but uh, just comes in um, just comes into um, into like question. Uh, if you are like very precise with your last moves, and if Mad Gang is, then I don't I don't think it matters um, what Lapinkoski does with his final tiles, because even if he joins the field like he did, then Mad Gang will have more will have plenty of points on his final moves uh, that will aid him to getting a win. Oh my god. Oh my god. Housumis has won. Housumis has won. For the second time. A he 2 0 taxi. Oh my lord. Yes. This is fucking fantastic. Jesus. I did not actually expect <laughs> a 2 0 win from him uh, against, against such a tough player. Wow, sir. I am extremely proud of Hosumis. Jeez. 2-0. Oh. And score is goes to 1 and 1. Then let's see. Um, I assume um, that Lapinkoski and Madkan are having a small break. So let's have a look at uh, Teivainen. Which are in a decider and which has started just four or five minutes ago. So let's actually look at the decider. Also, I will mark down the Ilka Loku as a. Absence loss. Unfortunately, but it is what it is. <clears throat> okay. They were in plus six on the scoreboard, and ooh, there's a massive, massive threat, and likely gonna be the case that uh, Rafa will be able to to complete a rather large city of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, or twenty-two points, which is gonna be just uh, just just a massive thing for for Rafa, especially when he's gonna be able to drop. A farmer on the same move and likely going to be able to, to take a hold of that farm as the first player. Although if they run and gets like almost any type of road tile, I would encourage him to go over here and then drop a farmer just to be able to prevent Rafa from dropping a farmer when he gets the triple city over here. Like for example now, but actually Maybe even here on drop of farmer. Ah, there are actually there are actually a lot of stuff that they want to do with this tile. Yeah, sure. Um, this is a bit from the weaker end, but it's somehow it's it's somewhat doable. Although I would prefer this with a meeple. But then now we see the. Consequences of the of, of the was actions as he did not meeple uh, he did not preemptively meeple this field, so Rafa was able to do so and got a six point field 
to which Stevanen now, after adding two points to his road, expanded by, by two cities. So definitely I think Stevanen st uh, still has work to do with, uh, with prioritization. Um, this I don't think was, uh, was nearly one of the top priorities. Devanen does have a city cap waiting to get finished next to his two monasteries, but unfortunately Rafa has been able to limit it to a dagger, but all three of them are still remaining, so there is no rush yet, or yeah, there, there is no need to panic. At least just yet. If Devanen is going to be able to save this square or get the dagger before Rafa is going to be able to finish the, the city over here, then I think Devanen will still have a good fighting chance. Rafa may pulling one Ah, now, now there is a, a great, a great use for Devanen. Go over here, drop a farmer. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. You see, I mean, this is also maybe doable, but I don't really love it uh, because there were still uh, th there were still all types of all types of tiles, crossroads, straight roads, and starting tiles to this square, and so. It's going to be very important for Devanen to attack this field at some point, because it's it's a significant amount of points, 12 points. This field is, and there and he would have had just a perfect opportunity to go over here now, and uh, oh no 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 no, Devanen, like although. Although it looks like a very like intuitive place to place this tile too, like just being one city cap away from uh, completing this city, then the move is to absolutely go over here with the tile, because then it does not create an attacking spot for 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 for, uh, for, for uh, Rafa to attack this city. Whereas now Tevanen actually risked the whole city. To get attacked by Rafa and still at, still does the same thing. Rafa now with two choices: either go here and extend Devanes city or block these two meeples. And yet another mistake by Devanen, I think. I think he should have definitely gone over here and save these two monasteries. He is still kind of able to do that if he now goes over here and uh, does a semi save. But judging by by the prioritization of Devan, and I don't think he's going to do that. Could also also go over here and uh, remove an attacking spot from from, from uh, Rafa again. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, these are just just not the moves that. Uh, I'm highly looking forward to see from from Devan and because I think he's like uh, with, with every passing move he is actually decreasing his chances of winning first with this tile uh, which like it does remove a uh, it does remove an an attacking spot to this city, but it also makes the city very inconvenient to complete, because it, it needs to be completed with triple cities. Uh, sorry, with uh, with city caps. Next up, he goes over here and uh, creates a, a an attacking spot for for uh, Rafa to attack this city, and risks everything that he has built. Then. In order to get out from the city plus road situation, he's gonna he goes over here and creates another attacking spot. Whilst he still had 
um, I think four, three city caps remaining in the deck that could that could have uh, finished the city to this square without having to need uh, without uh, having to do anything without having to risk or yeah just without having to risk this city to an attack from here and he also risked the uh, risked getting his monasteries blocked for uh, quite a few turns actually was uh, rather fortunate that uh, Rafa decided not to do that I am I am uh, quite surprised that uh, Rafa went for this move instead just trying to prevent the completion of the large city instead of blocking two monasteries but uh, yeah if Devan continues to do stuff like this I don't think it's going to help his chances of survival his winning chances are basically dependent on this city being finished, I think. Because Rafa is now plus 24 points ahead, plus 28, 29, 41, 49, 55, 39. And then this huge city, but it, it it looks very very unlikely that this city is going to get finished. It might be even be possible for Rafa to attack it from here. Okay, it is not. But are there even tiles to go to that fit there? There is one vanilla city cap that, that goes here, but that's all there is. So just a 50-50 chance, well, really smaller because he, uh, because Devan also has to get like sort of perfect tiles to here and here, but he has a 50% he has a 50% chance to draw the vanilla the vanilla city cap to a spot which is blockable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All, all triangles are gone. Actually, interesting. Um, so, are there even tiles to finish the city? Uh, one vanilla city cap here, but then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are city caps still remaining to actually finish the city, but uh, Devanin is going to need some sort of wizardry to pull this game off. Could, do, could, could try maybe something like going over here with the meeple and then connect to the field by a curve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Still five curves, which is really a lot because there are only ten tiles remaining, so almost half of those are curves because you gotta take into account that there is also one tile in the hand of Rafa, so still really uh, 11 tiles remaining, not 10. Rafa likely gonna go over here or just over here. I think like actually this move would I think might just secure the win like entirely for, for Rafa. It doesn't go for it though. Uh, yeah, I, there might not be too much for Devan to do. Ah, okay. Well, Rafa pulls the vanilla stick cap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is one 
crossroad, which goes here. And no starting tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two regular straight roads. Actually a decent connection spot. But it's not going to be enough. Rafa now plus 28. 34. 35. 43. 49. 41. 33. 32. 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 20, 15, 19, Rafa is like not including, not, not, not including this field, which Stevanen now joins. Ah, oh, actually, if, uh, I mean, Stevanen still has chances to score points, like he can, if he gets his hands on on the final remaining field cross uh, field crossroad goes over here then the final remaining straight road then it's going to be 12 points then maybe he can well three tiles remaining yeah so that is possible go over here then try get try to get the the final straight road one two three four five six Seven. There is indeed one left. It's going to be a 12 point move. It's not going to be enough, but uh, it's the highest point scoring opportunity you have. Canelo win by taking over the fields using his meeple advantage. Yeah, I, I, I honestly don't think so. According to my calculations, plus 32, 33, 39, 38, 46, 38, 30, um, 36, and then a quadrillion points from this. 30, maybe like 20 or so. Ah, ah, but uh, I don't think this spot was was good at all because I think it was. If there are even curves remaining, which probably actually still still are, um, it's very likely that this spot was blockable from uh, like with so many tiles. This tile, this tile. Maybe there's even like a regular curve remaining. Okay, so actually, as a matter of fact, this spot was blockable with every single tile in the game. Uh, although I think. Rafa still has one in hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A regular curve. Which means that this spot was blockable with every single tile in the game remaining. So, and not good. David is now going to be just able to add two, uh, one point to his sit. Actually, uh, well two points here, but it, it just gives three for for Rafa and they are not going to be able to use his meeples anymore. So just one point, I think. And looks such a look, looks like such a juicy city, but uh, unfortunately not complete. Ah, wait, there might have been a better move uh, actually after all. If uh, Devan goes over here and blocks this field, then Rafa is not going to be able to take six, but uh, four. So Devan could have made a two point move, placing it over here. 
like tec technically a two point move. Huh. Kind of an unfortunate destiny uh, uh, for these monasteries, which were looking like uh, very juicy. Like um, even like after after this uh, city cap was added without a meeple, which I think was totally fine move. But then uh, Rafa just grabs city caps, city caps, restricts city caps, restricts, and ah. And then also, because they went and uh, prioritized a little, uh, a little differently than what I had in mind, did not take the field beforehand, and uh, was not, well, and, and thus he was not the first player on the field, and then had to fight for it, anyways. Aha! <laughs> Rafa asking, uh, uh, how how come do you um, do, how, how how come do you speak su such good uh, Spanish? And uh, yeah, Dave is just saying that uh, he has lived uh, quite quite a while in um, in South America, I think. It seems that my uh, basic Spanish lessons have uh, also been somewhat useful because I was able to actually understand some of that. <laughs> uh, yellow one side away from finishing the dodo. Yeah, it's a very, very unfortunate. It would it would have been such a a beautiful city. But um, two one for uh, Rafa. Nonetheless, actually, I'm very proud of today's results, as it is, you know, Spain that we are talking about. It's not like a, a some uh, casual uh, slippery, like a, 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 ca a casual slippery slappery team. And uh, I am very proud of the of how the Finnish players how um, have. Uh, have done today, despite all the, uh, I would say, uh, deserved criticism that I have given um, at in 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 some occasions. <clears throat> okay, Lapinguski does have um, might or let's say might have a possibility to still score a match. Point for Finland. Let's see how the situation is. Plus three for 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 uh, Mikko. Uh, equal. Then minus nine, minus seventeen, minus twenty-six, twenty-nine, twenty-six. 20, 13, 12, 5, ah, he is minus 4. I might not, I, I'm not sure if I counted this monastery. Minus 4 or minus 12. Still has to pull something off in, in any case. For what that something is, I do not know. Uh, not going to be able to overrun this field or tie it with the amount of tiles. This one would be plus three if there are even tiles for that. Um, what about this though? 
I mean, he could have just tried to shroud his own monastery, right? Then one for him and two. Yeah, I think like a better move would have been going over here. Because if Matt can then decides to connect and get three points, then he's going to give Labingoski a meeple back. And uh, well, that just wouldn't be good for uh, for uh, Madcan. So definitely one missed point for Labingoski here. Three points go onto the board of Labingoski. I assume he is now plus one. I assume I did count this monastery in. But Madcan does have two tiles. Well, if Lapikoski, if there is a curb, then uh, uh, there's a six point move to be made. Let's try to. Oh, actually, this is. Oh, oh my god. This is fantastic move by Madcan. If there is a tile to go here, gonna be a three plus potentially six point move, which would be. Definitely the final nail in the coffin. Lapingos is going to be able to take four points. Is that going to be enough? I mean, this move puts me to think that it is not. And it is indeed not, as Mad Kang is able to uh, steal the six point uh, or uh, to, uh, to eat up this six point farmer. And this is going to be a match point four for the Spanish player just by how much I am interested to know though it might not be uh, it, it might it might not actually be too big of a difference eight ah actually only only a seven point difference. And not too shabby. But it is still a win for Spain nonetheless. Huh. Can I get somewhere? Thank you. So a another one to finish on a duel. Which puts Spain to a one and four with one absence win, which for one more time to Team Spain, I, I apologize for Ilka's absence. Would have definitely loved to have a full 5v5, but let's call that one an accident. And so ends the final friendly match of the 2024 VTCOC season to a win of 1-4 to four in favor of Spain. Congratulations to the whole team and congrats on actually pulling off so many friendly matches this, uh, this, uh, on, on this uh, preseason for Spain. I think you guys were the... Um, the most active team when it comes to the friendly matches, maybe in somewhere like seven, eight matches, like sort of a ridiculous number anyway. Because it might be so that even the, the um, out of all the matches that I have streamed 
um, for the uh, when like regarding the friendly matches, then I don't know, forty percent were Spain, <laughs> <laughs> which you know at least you guys provide the content. Ah, uh, Torila, meta patana. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But, 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 still, it's not a it, it's not a sweep for Spain. It's it's a one four with also uh, um, two of the duels going going into a decider, which means that we did not get absolutely slammed on, unlike on uh, some on, on like a couple other matches. <laughs> but um, I am definitely proud of the Finnish players, what they have achieved today. And I am proud to see that they have indeed upped, uh, up, upped their level in the past few weeks. And that my uh, private sessions have definitely not gone uh, in vain. Now, if we can be uh, quick, then actually let's take a look at the Cargason.cat page because there should be, I think, some of the matches already scheduled. Uh, I, th I know at least Ukraine, Italy, is, but I'm not sure in which group it is. Okay, here it is. So. Um, uh, Ukraine, Italy, gonna be actually tomorrow at 18:30 UTC. I don't think I will be actually able to stream that. Uh, wait, that's so. That's 21:30. Um, you, yeah, Finland time. Well, I might I. Just and just might be, but I do have some uh, something else planned for tomorrow. Some uh, private practice sessions for not only for Finland, but also I am running that uh, some some I I am running some uh, practice sessions for some for some other players as well. I'm not gonna tell them who they, I, I'm not gonna tell you who they are, but. Um, I am hoping that uh, they that that they also can show the improvement in level um, if this happens to be as successful as to my fellow Finnish players. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. I will see you with some more Carcassonne content at some point next week in a form of the actual tournament um, in, in the form of the actual tournament matches between whoever countries it might be. I hope you all have a wonderful evening and bye for now.